Okay, I think we'll get started. Okay. So today we're going to talk about a little bit more advanced theory than um, Arrhenius the Arrhenius theory for kinetics. And this is activated complex theory. We're going to try to force in some ideas of thermodynamics to where they really don't belong. Thermodynamics can really only talk about um, stable states. So we think about the products and we think about the reactants and we think about the difference of the products of re and reactants and addressing questions in thermodynamics are s such as where will that equilibrium lie in the end at the as in the, in a sense of infinite time where will it end up it doesn't answer any questions about how fast the reaction is going and it also doesn't address anything about unstable states so intermediate states in between the reactants and the products but what we're going to do is sort of force that and see what we can get out. And we're going to end up deriving something called Eyring's equation, uh, which is another equation for representing the rate constant as a function of uh, temperature, just like the Arrhenius rate equation. All right, so uh, let's take a generic reaction, uh, reactants to products, and um, <clears throat> As an example, uh, let's let's look at the reaction. Uh, it just so happens that the re the, this reaction, OH minus plus uh, H3Ci, just switches out the OH and the I. So there's our reaction. So here's our reactants, here's our products in this example. But just generically we have reactants and products and if the if the equilibrium lies product favored then the products will be lower than reaction and vice versa. Now there's a slight change here uh, com as compared to um, the Arrhenius graph it is an energy, this is an energy, but I'm expi explicitly labeling this as a free energy. So um, the changes here are really going to be delta G's. So the difference between reactants and products is given to us by delta G standard here, and that will tell us where the equilibrium will lie uh, through uh, the delta G equation. But what we do then here is we say this gap from here to here we're going to label that as delta G double dagger, as it's called. And the double dagger state is this activated complex state. So what the activated complex is, is actually the, the as, as far opposite from a stable state as we can be. This is the most unstable state. So we're, we're saying this is the state that represents what the molecule is doing, what the molecules are doing at the highest energy uh, of activation. And so let's take this example as, uh, as the case. So uh, as this reaction happens, this OH comes in and starts to bond with the carbons. That presses these hydrogens up and the uh, iodine starts to break its bond. So there's this intermediate state, well not even, this, this activated complex, so this is the activated complex of highest energy. This is not a situation these, uh, this molecule wants to be in. And so you can go back, if you want to go back and um, try to uh, review some of the things from Intro to Physical Chemistry 1 and Vesper Theory and all that, you can see that this is not going to be a very favorable state and this would never stay in this state here. So this is this passage point uh, over this the top of this energy hill. Okay, so we're going to label this as the activated complex, this double dagger. And then what we're going to do is we're going to say that there is an equilibrium. Okay, so here's where we're forcing an idea that doesn't really belong, but we're going to be able to make a little progress by doing so. We, we're going to say there's an equilibrium between the reactants and this activated complex. And then we're going to say once the activated complex, once, uh, if, if the activated complex then goes this way, it just goes all the way. Right? So 
uh, there's this bit where we go up and then come back down, up, come back down, and then anyone that gets over the hump just stays over the hump. So we're looking at this equilibrium to the peak and back, peak and back. And we're going to call that K double dagger, right? The double dagger la label will be representing this activated complex state. Then activated complex theory says that um, the rate constant is proportional, is proportional to this equilibrium constant. And that makes some intuitive sense. If, if the equilibrium lies, if, if we're making a lot of this, right, or a reasonable amount of this, the equilibrium is always going to lie this way towards reactants. But if it, uh, if we're making a reasonable amount of this, then we'll be making more product. If we're not making this in this equilibrium condition very much, then we won't make much progress. So it makes sense that the rate constant should be proportional to the K double dagger. And the proportionality here is um, linear, right? That's And that's that's where just the uh, activated, the I-rings equation is gonna come from just by saying this is linear. There's no inherent reason that's linear, but linear would be a good first start. So just k, just directly proportional to k. And then uh, some multiplying factor, some what's called the frequency factor. Now there are, you will see if you look up uh, Iring's equation, you might see uh, this as h over k, uh, k Boltzmann t. Uh, that's coming out of some ideas from the theory of statistical mechanics. Uh, but we're just going to leave it as f here in our equation. And this again is this, you can think of it sort of as this fudge factor uh, of similar to the uh, Arrhenius equation uh, uh, A, the, the uh, Arrhenius equation A. Um, oh, actually, sorry, I've got a mistake here. This is called the transmission factor. The Arrhenius is the the Arrhenius A is the frequency factor. It's called the transmission factor, but it's very similar to the trans to the uh, frequency factor. Okay. Um, well, let's now use this as an equilibrium constant. So we can write a delta G equation for that as delta G double dagger equals minus R T L N K. Right, so this would be just like writing, this is, this is the analog of writing this. It's like that. Well, let's solve for k double dagger. So we're going to um, bring RT, minus RT over here and then exponentiate. So we have the double dagger is e to the minus uh, g double dagger over RT. So k is f times this, and that's Iring's equation. And so uh, this is Iring's equation. But we can push this a little further and fish out energetic terms versus entropy terms using this delta G equation, which we've talked about before. And so this is true uh, all the time, constant pressure uh, and constant temperature, but it, it's otherwise true for reaction conditions. And this then means that this will be true, because this is always true. So under these special conditions, this will be true. Again, in as much as we're treating this as an, as an equilibrium. So again, we're forcing our thermodynamics where it doesn't really belong, uh, but we just carry out formally as if this were uh, a real stable state. So then we can plug this up into here. So we're going to get a minus delta H double dagger over RT minus a minus T delta S, so the minuses will cancel, the T's will cancel, and we'll be left with this. And so we'll often see the I-rings equation written this way as well with the en energy term, the enthalpy term here, and the entropy term uh, right here separated out. So let's say a few things about that. Um, the energy term is like an activation energy. So if we go back to here, what this is going to be, this is the this is going to be an energy comparison between the OH by itself and the HCI by itself, that the total energy there versus the energy when these come together. And this is going to be 
very unfavorable. We're gonna have to squeeze up all those hydrogens into the plane. We're gonna have carbon bonded to five atoms here, right? So not a not a, a, a very energetically unfavorable state. So much higher in energy than uh, than this, than, than than these two combined. And so that energy difference uh, is the delta H. Right? So we expect delta H to be uh, usually positive. So that's that will be unfavorable here. And so that will slow a reaction. So the bigger the delta H, right? Essentially, and not quite, but essentially the higher, well, the bigger the delta H, the more this term is diminished, the slower the rate, okay? Now, delta H isn't everything here, so it's not quite as simple as the Arrhenius equation, which would just have an energy of activation. There's an entropy here factor, and what is the entropy factor? Well, here we have two things, and now they're come together as one. And so we would see that this is a more ordered state than this. So nothing to do with nothing to do with energy here, but just an entropy factor. We've gone from two distinct molecules to um, a single state. So we have a reduction in entropy, which is also unfavorable. So in most cases, uh, the entropy then is less than zero, which is unfavorable. And that's what we would expect. This would be a very, un if this were a stable thermodynamic state, we would say this would be a very, very unstable situation and uh, or very unfavorable. And we would definitely have um, uh, a very uh, positive delta G. All right, so this is the activated complex theory. It, it's nice to think about this because it gives us a little more insight into what's going on when these rea reactants hit. We have to consider both the energetics, but also the entropy factor, which is not considered in the Arrhenius equation. So good chance to see this. Uh, it's, it feels a little strange because we are using a theory that doesn't fit, but as long as we know that and understand that and, and understand that this is not a rigorous thermodynamic statement, we can't trace it back to um, conservation of energy and the things we've founded thermodynamics on, but just use it as a guide or an educated guess for how the, uh, the rate constant will behave. And it works pretty well in many cases.